Good morning. It's nine o'clock here in San Diego, and so we're ready to begin today's webinar. Today's webinar is on the sub subject of uh, linking protein structure to protein sequence and multiple sequence alignments. My name is Andrew Ori, and if you have any questions after the webinar, please feel free to email me or call. Uh, during the webinar, you can use the question panel to ask any questions, and I'll try and address them as we go along or, or wait till the end. If at the end you have a question that's more complicated, and you, I can open your microphone and you can speak through the microphone. You can follow um, Molesoft on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, and LinkedIn. And we've got another webinar in a couple of weeks' time on homology modeling. All participants of the webinar uh, receive a 14-day a license. And you can email, I've sent you an email about it, but if you haven't, didn't receive that email, then please email me and I'll send you the link again. Today's topics, the key topics are we're going to let, see how to read in sequence data into ICM Bio and how to extract sequences from the protein data bank, how to create new sequences and then edit them, how to map Uniprot annotations onto your sequence. Uh, this, this helps you find key regions very quickly. How to uh, place these sequences into a multiple sequence alignment and build an alignment. And then once you have your alignment, uh, there's different ways of editing the alignment. You can shift uh, the sequence along, for example, or you can um, add gaps, or you can color the alignment and also annotate the alignment. And then we'll be linking the sequence alignment directly to protein structure. So for example, here we have the surface of a protein, and the coloring from the alignment is mapped onto the surface. And then we have an example where we'll show how to just show the sequence identity within the binding pocket of multiple um, structures superimposed. And then we'll end with a blast search in ICM trying to find a homologous um, structure in the PDB to a, to a sequence, which we'll use in the next uh, webinar in two weeks' time. So ICM, ICM Bio, or all our products, have a direct link to these three uh, key databases. So obviously the first and most important one is probably the Uniprot, which is the central repository of protein sequence data and function data. We also have links to ProSite, which contains protein domains, families, and functional sites, as well as uh, patterns and profiles. And also to PFAM, uh, where you can download protein family uh, alignments, which are pre-prepared. So our first example is we're just going to uh, read in some sequence data. Um, we are going to focus on the SH2 domain, which is a structurally conserved protein domain contained within SRC oncoproteins and in many other intracellular signal transducing proteins. So SH2 domains allow proteins containing these domains to dock to phosphorylated tyrosine residues on, on other proteins. And so we, we're going to look at those sequences. And we're going to read them from Uniprot, from PFAM, extract a, a sequence from an SH2 domain from the protein data bank, and we're also going to create new sequences. So if you have ICM open, uh, if not, you, have a, a, you should have a, a button to double click, and you should open sim something similar to this. You may not see these three, four um, menus, but you would have the bio info menu. So to bring in data into ICM Bio, the key, one of the key uh, tabs is this search tab. So this search tab allows you to search the PDB, for example, um, and Uniprot. Uniprot is the, what we're going to, to look at um, today. And the first sequence we're going to read in and find the SH2 domain is the ABL2 uh, protein, which is a non-receptor tyrosine protein kinase um, that's linked to uh, cell growth and survival, such as um, cytoskeleton remodeling and uh, cell adhe adhesion. So we're going to read in this sequence. We use Uniprot. Um, we're going to search by protein name, and we click on this. 
binoculars button. This reads in a table. The table contains the Uniprot ID and the Uniprot accession code, as well as other information such as organism, the actual sequence itself here. Uh, these are sites that are mapped directly onto the sequence, which is very helpful, and also this functional data as well. So to read in this sequence into ICM, we just simply double click on the table. And now you can see in the ICM workspace, we have uh, two, two things. We have the sequences, this ABL2 human protein sequence we just read in, and also the table. So if you want to look at the ABL2 human sequence, we just expand here, and you can see the, the full sequence. And also at the bottom, you see another uh, option here called sites. And it's telling us there's 64 items in that site, in those sites. So if we um, expand here using this, so now we have the sequence on top and below we have the sites. So these sites are useful. So if you want to find the kinase activation loop, for example, we double click here and that takes us directly to the sequence here for that region. But we're working on the SH2 domain and that's annotated here. 19. So if we double click, we see the SH2 domain. And we may just want to extract the sequence of the SH2 domain, for example. So we highlighted it. We, we can extract by right clicking on that. You can see it's highlighted in blue by double clicking. We say copy selection as text. And then we can go to file, new, sequence. And I'm just going to put ABL2, give the sequence a name, paste it, and here we have another sequence. So now in our sequence tab, we have the SH2 domain as well as the, the full uh, protein sequence here. Okay. So a better environment maybe to analyze um, sequences and to look at them is to um, use what we call the... Um, edit sequence panel. So if you expand here or right click on um, on the name of the sequence you want to look at more closely, there's an option called edit sequence. This brings up this uh, sequence panel here. So it's quite useful. You've got all the sites listed on the right hand side. So you can uh, toggle those on and off or just show individual ones. So we have um, regions where the sequence is variable. Uh, we have uh, motifs, it's a kinase activation to, uh, motif loop here. Um, we can flag all the phosphorylation sites with P here, just toggling on and off. And we can also obviously find our, uh, there's, where there's conflicts or where there's mutations, you can map those here. And, for example, the SH2 domain is shown here. So, if you like, the, you can save this as an image, for example. You can click here to export this uh, sequence as it is. Or, and so you just click here and then just enter a name. You can save it in JPEG, PNG, or vector image file format. You can zoom into the sequence editor and zoom out. You can um, vertical zoom, and you can toggle things like show the sequence or show ruler, and toggle the labels on and off. These are the labels inside the, the coloring. You can also toggle them off on and off here as well. You can also edit this sequence. To edit the sequence, we uh, just we need to. We're currently in read-only mode, so if we click here, we're now in edit mode. And so you can add your own uh, sequence using the keyboard. You can also uh, remove a site. You can just uh, right click and remove if you wanted to. The annotation, not, not, it won't delete the actual sequence, it'll just remove the annotation. You can add your own sites, new, new sites as well. So you can select a region and click um, New. And then you have the categories as defined here by Uniprot and um, unsure. <laughs> and uh, you can add some 
annotation here and the coloring here and then you're you're unsure uh, the binding site here is at the bottom you can toggle that on and off here so that's your own annotation that's a single sequence okay so we can close this and save it or um, or, or you can export as an image close it so going back to the to the ICM our SH2 domains so we can also extract a sequence an SH2 sequence from the PDB from a PDB structure so we have a direct link to the PDB website go to PDB search here and I know that uh, this PDB code contains an SH2 domain of ABL2 so it's for EIH Okay, search and this displays the structure here we can see the sequence for this structure by expanding on here this is fully linked so if I wanted to select this helix red is helix green is um, beta sheet and a magenta is a non-canonical helix you see the link is directly to hit the sequence here and so you, anything you do here will respond to that that selection but in this example we want to extract this sequence so maybe we want to use it for a sequence alignment so to do that um, we right click on the sequence on the molecule and choose extract sequence go OK so now you see that we have uh, this sequence extracted here for this SH2 domain so uh, you can expand here and you can see the, the sequence shown here and this also contains sites as well um, this is from the PDB uh, but you can also add your own annotation sites as well here if you wanted to as well by right selecting a region and then right clicking and choose annotate make site and that will map the site here okay. and finally so other ways to read in sequence would, would be to go file open and then you can open in um, so sequence format fast a format shown here if you wanted to read it in from an external file and just finally if we wanted to go from the sh2 domain from the pfam we go to file load and choose pfam alignment and you need the pfam id or you can search by keyword and you can choose whether to download all the sequences or just a representative one from each uh, family and just go OK and then that takes a little, a little bit of time to read and we get a table that matches our search SH2 the first one is the one we want and we double click and here we have the PFAM alignment so we'll see in the next example how useful these alignments are for link to, linking to structure and um, that's the next example on how to create an alignment. Okay, so in the next example, we are going to read in objects, which are PDB structures. We're going to read in some sequences from the, P, from the Uniprot. We're going to extract sequences from the object and build an alignment. We're going to uh, look at the alignment and look at the sequence similarity in the alignment around the ATP binding pocket of this kinase and then we're going to see how you can map data from the, the alignment to your 3D structure so within ICM there are a variety of different methods for alignment the, the most famous ones are Smith Waterman, Wilbur Lippmann and uh, Neilman Winch uh, alignment there's also Zega which is uh, one developed by Molsoft or Ruben Abagayan at who's at UCSD, the company founder. Uh, it's more designed for, for modeling to get the best um, structure guided um, model. And then we have uh, comparison matrices, uh, Gonit, Bloss uh, Blossom, a variety of different ones, and HSSP. And you can play around the toggle between the two different ones, uh, between the different alignment methods if you want to. We also have inbuilt into ICM a modification of the DSSP algorithm for predicting secondary structure. Um, it's based on the observed pattern of hydrogen bonds in a three-dimensional structure. 
Okay, so the example we will start working. So I'm just going to start with a clean ICM session. And we're just going to go to um, Uniprot. And we're going to read in some kinase sequences. So the first one is PIM1 underscore human. Just type it. And um, you should get a table here. Just double click to load it in. The next one is KCC2A. These are all uh, CAMK kinases in the similar, same family. And then CHK2. Double click. So now we have three sequences. I'm just going to delete these tables so we don't need them anymore. And now I'm going to read in two kinase protein structures from the PDB. So one of them is 2PHK. So we go to the PDB search tab, uh, search tab and then PDB search. Go okay, search. And the structure is loaded. You can see 2PHK here. And the other one is 1 QL6. Okay, so now we have two objects, two, P two PDB structures and three sequences. So to make our alignment, we want to include these structures. So we can see the sequence here. We want to extract the sequence. So as we did before, we right click on the sequence and choose extract sequence. Let's go OK. And you see now that 2PHK is listed here. And this little symbol here indicates that the sequence has been extracted and it's linked to this one here. And then we'll do the same with the 1QL6 as well. So we right click here and choose extract sequence and it's displayed here. So now we have five uh, sequences for our sequence, multiple sequence alignment. To make a sequence alignment, you might have you may have hundreds of sequences here in, in a bigger example. Um, so you can double click on one and use tab to select them. Or you can use, select a non-contiguous list using control. Okay, you just need to select them. And then you right click on the sequences and choose the option align sequence. And here we have the sequence alignment. So um, you see in the, in the sequence alignment, we have uh, quite a, this CHK2 has a longer N-terminal uh, domain. And you can see that these two blue dots indicate that this is a, is a protein sequence, a 3D structure. So if we toggle that structure off here, you see it's, it's turned off here and vice versa. We also notice that in the in the ICM workspace in the in the um, in the molecule we have this ALN here. This means that this sequence is now in the align in this alignment called ALN. So that means if you make a selection here, that selection is propagated to the alignment as well as the 3D structure. So you can select the helix here, for example. And that's propagated here, which is which is very useful. If you wanted to change the alignment method or any other option, you go to bioinfo, and um, you can choose multiple sequence alignment here, and then you can change the um, the comparison matrix here. And there's a way to change the align method as well. Okay, so we have these two kinases. At the moment, it's hard to tell which one's which. So uh, what we will do is we'll go to display tab and we'll say color and click and hold on the ribbon because they're displayed in ribbon. Click it color by alignment. Oh, sorry, color by object. So the 2PHK is colored blue and the 1QL6 is colored yellow. As I mentioned before, the aim of this example is to uh, be able to find the sequence identity around the ATP binding pocket of these these kinases and these sequences. So it would be, we need to now uh, superimpose these two structures so we can find the sequences around the ATP binding pocket. To superimpose, we expand here. We select what we want to superimpose. So 
I want to superimpose the A molecule of 2PHK and the one A molecule of 1QR6. So I click and press control. Or alternatively, you can use the, um, for example, you could use this uh, rectangular selection and just select that way as well. And then we go to display tab and there's a superimpose button here. And it asks you which one you want to be static. In this case, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to 2 PHK. And so now there, those two uh, kinases are superimposed. And it's a very powerful uh, superposition tool. So basically, it will superimpose anything you select. So if we wanted to maybe uh, superimpose these helix, this alpha C helix here in the which sometimes moves in and out of the binding pocket. You can just select that helix and then superimpose and it will do it. But in this case, uh, we're pretty more, it's pretty, uh, it's sensible to superimpose the ligand binding pocket. So um, they're pretty close structures anyway, but uh, we can select the neighbors of the of the ligand, so one this is showing the ATP of the 1QL6 here. This is the ATP molecule here. So we can select neighbors of this. And it asks us to select neighbors. So you right click on what you want to select from. So we're selecting neighbors from next to ATP. We say the radius is five angstroms. We want to select uh, within all objects, so that's 2PHK and 1QR6, and we just go OK. See a selection, and we can superimpose here. So the, the binding pocket is nicely superimposed. OK, so to look at the alignment um, and, and map and see the conservation in our binding pocket compared to the other three compared to these two objects and the three sequences. What we can do is right click, select, make that selection again. As a, let's go OK. And you can see that we have green crosses here in the ICM workspace for our selection. And we're, it's also selected in the sequence here. So you can see what is selected. And you can also see that we have the selection highlighted in the alignment as well. Uh, but to in order to see the selection propagated to all sequences, including the ones we read in from Uniprot, we need to open the alignment editor panel. So we click on this hammer here, and there's an option in the selection uh, panel called propagate to all sequences. So if we click here, you see our selection has now uh, propagated down throughout the whole sequence alignment. And so, now to see that now we just want to see these these selected residues that we that are in the binding pocket. So to do that, um, we can we just want to see these on their own. So we can see the, the conservation. So we can invert our selection. If we invert the selection, that selects everything that's not in our original selection. So these are the things that are more than five angstroms away from the ATP binding site. And then we just hide, click hide. And then we're left with a nice compact alignment of just the residues that we're interested in. And we can see it's pretty well conserved in, in some regions. And so we have, for example, uh, this region here, which is in the back. This is the hinge region, which seems to be variable. So we've got, um, this is the gatekeeper residue here. And so we can if you make a selection here, you can then look at the, the residues by clicking on the display tab and clicking on the residue shown here. So these, it's a bit variable here. We have, we have a semi-conserved uh, similar charge on this residue here at the bottom of the pocket. And so overall it's pretty well conserved. Maybe if we expanded the selection a little bit more, we would see um, differences away from the pocket moving out towards the alpha C, which is where you're, you're likely to get specificity for, for kinases, for kinase inhibitors. Okay, so it would be nice to see if there is any 
uh, variability out of, um, outside the pocket. So what we can do is we just unhide everything and we can color the, the, the ribbon, for example, by, um, by the alignment. So at the moment we're colored by consensus strength. So residues that are fully conserved, like this um, phenylalanine, are colored dark blue. And there's some rules about it. So semi-conserved are yellow and white is non-conserved. So let's just, um, if we go to the ribbon button, and say color by alignment. So you can see as we move away from the ATP pocket, uh, the white increases, and so you have variability on this alpha C uh, and the bottom of the pocket here. We can also play around with the coloring as well. So there's a variety of different um, coloring options built into ICM Bio. This is conservation. This will highlight very dark in a very dark color, fully conserved residues. Uh, there's um, colored by hydrophobicity, uh, sort of structurally. Uh, consensus strength is the original one we looked at. By secondary structure, so red is helix, green is um, beta sheet, and magenta is uh, non-canonical helix. So and so uh, consensus strength we can choose, or, or um, what do you better in this example to look at conservation. Okay, so if we wanted to just select all the residues that are 100% conserved throughout the alignment, we can do that using this um, button here, this, this drag button here. So we can drag it. You see that's the strength. So if we select here, we move it to 100, and we're going to select by consensus. So X means fully conserved. So if we click here, select, this shows the selection has, um, this is showing all the 100% conserved residues in the pocket. So we can click and hold on here, and we can display those in wire. So these are all fully conserved. Okay. If we want to select those that are semi-conserved, that's a uh, hash. So we can click hash and select those as well. Okay. It might be nice to propagate onto the surface of the protein where these as these conserved residues are. So we can make a surface by double clicking on one of the, the objects. We go to the meshes tab. There, is, there are some inbuilt electrostatics and binding property surfaces, uh, but we don't really need that coloring. So we're just gonna build a plain solid. Just go okay. So here we have the, the, the plain solid. It's gonna undisplay the representation underneath. And you see there's a residue label as well. Um, so we can, for example, we can just select again the fully conserved residues. So I'm just going to type X here, press select. And you see that the selection has been made here. These are all highlighted. And then the, the, the skin that we just made, this um, surface we call, we call it skin. So it's in this is a G for graphical object, um, and it's a skin, and it's made from the molecule, the P PDB structure 2PHK, and it's made from the A molecule. So if you right click on here, there's an option called color, and it says by atom selection, and then you can just click green, for example, change the brush size as just the, how big a, how how wide the coloring will be and the shown here. So you see we have the green. So we could also, and it'll look better with the high quality graphics and anti-aliasing here. So you can also uh, do the similar thing with the semi-conserved, we just select here and right click and choose 
color by selection and then you can write and you can add a your own uh, color Let me get a little bit in the semi conserved as shown here so if you have some pockets where allosteric pockets where you might want to find you may want to try and target for maybe an allosteric inhibitor or something um, this could be a good way of maybe prioritizing certain pockets to choose that are maybe that are that aren't very similar if you want to, if, if you want a selective inhibitor okay so we can also uh, look at the uh, sequence similarity and identity and and plot it onto the onto a table. So if you right click on the table and choose calculate sequence similarity from alignment. So we have uh, from alignment we want to compare it to uh, one of our target sequences. So we compare it to CHK2 and go OK. This builds a table where we have um, the sequence identity for example from our reference one which is CHK2 against 1QL6, which was one of our PDB, so the identity is 37, sequence similarity is 45%, obviously CHK2 against CHK2 is 100, and if we go along, we can see, if we move along here, we'll start getting into the regions where we have, um, so th th these ones have long end terminals, that's why we're missing residues here. So basically, this is your alignment with the sequence, um, with the, the sequence numbers and when they're fully conserved, they're colored, uh, conserved, um, the same color here. We've got an insertion here, for example. We can also plot, build a plot of the, um, if we click here, the alignment strength profile. Uh, we just go OK, and uh, so we have the, the alignment strength for each position. And we can also map that onto the alignment as well by going here and say plot. And we can see the bars. So where it's 100% conserved, you see obviously a larger bar. You can change it to, to lines as well. You can plot anything on top of a, an alignment, um, any um, real array of data you can plot on top. Okay, so that was to show how to um, how to map how to link sequence to to structure in the, in the three D. So the the, the last example is um, on alignment and its annotation, and we're going to be looking at uh, GPCRs for this example. So GPCRs all share a common structural core of seven transmembrane helices, but they lack a significant sequence homology between the subfamilies. And so this uh, causes problems, obviously, when you're modeling them. So when modeling GPCRs, it's important to, to get a good alignment between the query and the template structure. But fortunately, in most of the helices, in all of them, there's something that can guide you in order to, to align those helices correctly. Uh, you, when modeling GPCRs, which we will do in the next webinar, uh, you you may want to use um, pre-made alignments, for example, from ProSite, which you can download from, from ProSite directly, and you can use those to guide your alignment. But there's certain motifs, like, for example, this uh, dry motif in Helix 3, which aids um, the alignment. So let's read that example. It's going to get a clean ICM session, and the example is GPCR class A. Okay, so in this example, if I'm just going to put the default layout, we have uh, one GPCR crystal structure shown here, and a variety of other GPCR sequences. And some of these have um, 
crystal structures as well. So this, this will help us uh, build an alignment and find a template for, for modeling, for example. So if we read in, it's going to make go to Windows and you can say alignment main. That makes the alignment the, the key window in the display. I'm going to undisplay that. Okay, so in this example, we're going to, to use the annotation tools to better to easily navigate around the, the structure. So we click on the hammer button here. And one useful thing would be to show the secondary structure. So if we click here, this maps the secondary structure uh, from, the PD, from the PDB structure that we have in the alignment onto the, onto the alignment. So we have the helices shown in red. So for example, we can select helix one, which I think is here, part of that. Um, so you can either select here, you can see we made the selection, so you can, we have one helix uh, selected, and we can annotate that helix, for example. We can right click on a selection and say, draw a box, that would put a nice red box or whatever color you want around the, the uh, region. We can select that region again and choose shade color, so that will change the, the way it's shaded, so it helps us stand out. Or you can change the font color, oh, that doesn't look very good, um, change font color to Just make a selection and then go OK. Or you can just select and say clear font color. That's probably the best thing to do in that case. Um, there's other things to, to change. You can make the, the, the font color coat, um, bold. We can also make our own annotation as well. So we can say annotate region here, and um, this is helix one or tra tra transmembrane region TM one. Go OK. So now we have the the annotation here. So if we just cl cl single click on that annotation, it selects that region, and um, it's also the same with. Uh, disulfide bonds. So we see that we have a disulfide bond here. This yellow line indicates a disulfide. It's linking these cysteines. So if you single click, it selects it in the in the 3D display, and you can display that uh, disulfide with a stick, for example, and shown here. Okay. So we can also propagate other annotation. If you if you right click, if you make a selection, we can add other things such as annotate with residue number. Uh, just like this, it's got the residue number highlighted on top. Or you can um, add your own shapes, annotate with shapes. Um, let's go OK. Just different ways of annotating this region. Uh, you can also display the some other um, so we can display some other sites from the PDB here so these are taken this is a um, binding site for example you can see when I click in the display here it toggles down here the, the binding site region so this is from the from here if there's any other annotation any other sequences you can do the same and map those onto your, to your alignment I'm just going to delete that annotation. You can also extract an alignment. So if we want to just extract the sequence for uh, transmembrane one, we select it and then choose extract selected alignment block. So we have a new alignment here and we can rename that alignment to 
TM1, for example. Go okay, back. But uh, for this, as I mentioned, for GPCRs, we have there are certain motifs that are, are useful to, to identify. One way to do that would be to use the profile here. This click here, and you can see that the the alignment has the profile uh, with if the, if the, it's pretty well conserved, the, the letters are large. So, so the cysteine is fully conserved. It's making a disulfide bond. And then here we can easily find the, the DRY motif in TM3 shown here. So you can select that, that region. You can also add a title to your alignment. Yeah, you can also view the tree for your um, alignment as well. So if you, as here's the tree. Okay, and you can rearrange the tree as well. So if you wanted, for example, um, your crystal structure to be on the bottom, maybe for an image for a paper, with the alignment, you can drag it from here and drop it to the bottom. So it's uh, should be able to rear. It's not moving for some reason. You should be able to select a, a sequence and and try, yeah, and move it to the bottom. So you can toggle the tree on and off. You can say tree only. Just look at the phylogenetic tree. You can change the distance, the way they're clustered, using the drag drag bar. Okay. None do that. You can choose view differences, which just shows you where there's differences in your sequence in your sequence alignment. You can change the horizontal scroll. Like that. You can also edit an alignment. So to edit an alignment you need to have a space to to move it to. So you can shift you can select what you want to, to move and you can use the cursor keys to, to drag that sequence along. If you don't have a space you can select the whole sequence, the whole alignment at a certain point and then use the space bar to generate space so you can then move the alignment this way as well. Okay. And there's also a variety of preferences as well for uh, how you want to display the alignment. You can auto hide gaps, for example, if you've got very big gaps in your alignment, you can just hide them by changing the, the value here and there's different ways of displaying the, the hidden region so you can show the length of that hidden region or from residue to residue and uh, just like that using this okay so that's the alignment once you've made an alignment that you like that's going to get rid of the tree uh, you can save it as a png or as, as an image so you right click in the white space and choose save export as a copy to clipboard or save as image and you can choose uh, the resolution you might want to choose three for the resolution and you can choose whether to output as full width or in 60 chunks uh, 60 residue uh, chunks okay so that's the alignment editor and in preparation for uh, next time um, which is the modeling, we're just going to show you the blast search. So um, I'm just going to delete all here. So for a blast search we need to read in a sequence as we've done before. So this is the free fatty acid receptor 2. And it's a G protein coupled receptor. And it's a target for anti-obesity uh, drugs. So if we double click that loads that um, ligand, uh, sorry, that sequence into the ICM workspace, and so now you can 
we can run a blast search. So to do that, we click here, choose blast, uh, NCBI blast. It asks us to name of the sequence we want to blast. And you can run the blast against the whole of Uniprot or just sequences from the PDB. So that's what we need for this example because we want to find a template for this uh, sequence. So sequences from PDB and click on run search and hopefully it doesn't take too long to run. It shouldn't take too long, <laughs> but we will see. Yeah, so now we have the hits. So the top hit is a PDB with PDB code 4PHU and you can see the coverage. So this is the whole query sequence here. And this is our coverage, um, how good the signal identity is. And you get a table um, with the, the, the crystal structure name, the length and uh, identity and similarity scores as well as the, the actual alignment. So you can load the alignment here and use it for modeling. And then you need to read in the, the PDB structure as well. So the PDB is for PHU, so we can read it in. But this, this is just set up for, for next time. Okay, so it's the end of the, the webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask in the question panel. Or alternatively, you can just directly email me at andy at morsoft.com or give me a call. Or there's uh, on our website, there's ways to, to get in contact with us. So the next webinar is in two weeks' time. It's on protein structure modeling and structure analysis. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.